I just despise the f Every time I get in voice chat, he tells me my desk is dirty and my legs are hairy. It's hurtful because both are true. How could sharks have dropped down to an all-time low of 264 GP each? Well, it has something to do with that bizarre quote. But when I say they're at an all-time low, I mean all-time. In old-school RuneScape's 10-year history, also in the 20-year history of RuneScape 3, obviously the price has dropped so low because of a massive amount of fishing bots flooding the market with raw sharks. That's pretty common knowledge. But there have almost always been shark fishing bots in game. So I'm gonna find out what's different this time. Because growing up, sharks were almost always over 1,000 GP each, and there's always huge demand for them in game. It must take a massive supply shock to dramatically change shark prices. So to solve this mystery, I started with the price and volume graphs of raw sharks. In the second half of July, the daily trade volume of raw sharks started to skyrocket from seven to eight million raw sharks per day up to 13 to 15 million raw sharks per day in mid-August. My first thought was like, did Jagex change bot detection in some way that is less effective at detecting shark fishing bots? But after poking around, I heard about a Minnows bot script that was created around the first week of August. This could be the culprit, and if it is, that means it wasn't that Jagex stopped banning the bots, but more that this script somehow was getting away with it. But I'm not so sure yet. There are tons of shark fishing scripts out there, so why would this one have such an outsized impact? Well, who would know better than the maker of the script? So I reached out to them on Discord, and they were willing to tell me the story. Which is absolutely ridiculous. But first, let's introduce the main characters. We've got the creator of the script, who we're gonna call B. He's got a good friend who runs a large amount of bots, sometimes using B scripts. Let's call him G. He's more willing than B to do the administrative work to run a multi-hundred account bot farm. Then there's a third character who B calls his arch nemesis. We'll call him L. So to reiterate, we've got B the scripter, G the guy who runs huge bot farms, and L the arch nemesis. But why does B not like L? Well, let's use B's own words brought to life by an AI. This cheap bot would just be in the botting server chat complaining about the price of a couple of my scripts, complaining about how new features were locked behind a $10 paywall, and then would talk about his farm of less than 20 bots. I just despise the f Every time I get in voice chat, he tells me my desk is dirty and my legs are hairy. It's hurtful because both are true. At first I thought B was trolling, but B swears this is all true. And we'll continue with this crazy story right after this. Anyone looking for extremely comfortable, reasonably priced shirts that don't have the brand's name plastered all over them, plus an insane discount on them? Let me introduce to you Into the AM. They have a wide variety of shirt options with basic tees for everyday wear and graphic tees if you're feeling creative. Here are some of the recent t-shirts I've gotten from them. I love the outdoor related graphic tees, especially this Bigfoot t-shirt. They've got lots of designs. Those are just my favorite. And these shirts are incredibly comfortable and have a flattering cut. They make for awesome lounging or gaming clothes. Plus, Into the AM is having its biggest sale of the year for this Black Friday. It's 30 to 80% off until November 30th. Since the quality is great, and there are so many styles, it's also perfect for the upcoming holiday season for gifts or even just for yourself. Not only is there a 30 to 80% discount, but my discount code stacks with the sale on top of the big discounts you'll get. If you use my code SIRPUGGER, you'll receive an additional 10% off upon checkout. Click the link in the description to check them out now. Thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. So back in 2022, when raw sharks were around 700 GP each, L had posted some info about his small minnows bots, including that they're better than Kawamwan bots, they aren't getting banned at all, and he was running a few of them for 10 to 16 hours per day, five to seven days per week without getting banned. B is super annoyed by this. That motherfucker is running three accounts they fished on for a week by hand so they can do minnows for eight hours and then trade off the sharks by hand. Disgusting fuck people. Fast forward to July of 2023, G was running a large dragonhide tanning bot farm that started to lose GP. Margins were slim and ban rates were increasing. G starts complaining to B about it. B starts doing some research on a new bot script to help out G. He remembers that L still runs a small minnows bot farm that seems to almost never get banned, and sees an opportunity. Mess with L, 
and help out G, obviously making some money on the side by selling the script too. In B's own words, L is a scrub. I made the script not so much to put him out of business as just dunk on him. So he writes the script and he's motivated to automate as much as possible to prove a point. He doesn't just write a basic minnows fishing script. This one starts at level three, fishes in free to play until 82 fishing, and then a mule automatically trades at 15 mil for a bond and to get set up. Then it does the fishing contest quest, then the fishing trawler mini game, then gold farms minnows and mules them off until it gets banned. All automated. The whole point is to dunk on L because L has to manually create accounts and manually mule, and that disgusts B. Obviously, G is thrilled. The script takes out a lot of the headache for G, and so G starts spinning up virtual machines to host hundreds of bots on each at once. The script is available to some other people, but G is one of the largest users. And I was actually able to get in contact with G, and G showed me a screenshot of one machine that had run over 4,000 minnows bots so far, with about 200 currently active. About 100 still in free to play to get their fishing level up, and 100 members bots. And that was just one machine. G estimates they've run over 20,000 minnows bots in the past few months. And G doesn't keep detailed track of how far the average bot gets, but they told me that some get banned before making it to minnows, but some get over 30 million fishing XP before they're banned. And an average month's profit is 10 to 15 billion GP. B gave me even more stats. In the last 30 days, the script has over 36 years of runtime, which is about 438 bots running at any given time, or about 600 at any given time if you account for breaks. Given each account catches 350 sharks per hour, the script was catching about 3.6 million raw sharks per day, enough oversupply to crash the price. It seems like the script is unfortunately working so well because, well, one, Jagex hasn't been banning the bots quickly enough, and then two, B basically automated the whole process, which makes it easier for G to scale up operations quickly and recover from bans faster. What's interesting is that B isn't profiting anywhere near the amount that G is from the script that B wrote. Obviously, G does a lot of work on the administrative side to run so many bots, but this disparity also seems to be in line with the base motivations. G's here to profit, but B made this script because he just wanted to dunk on L. And I asked if B had spoken to L after he made the script, and B said he flamed L repeatedly after he made the script, but it seems to just bounce off L, making B even more mad. He would say some shit like, See dude, I put you on game. New York ass mother. Now before any of you get any nefarious ideas, B and G likely agreed to talk to me and provide info for this video because they've already crashed the market for raw sharks, and I'm guessing ban rates are probably going up, so don't think you should be doing this too. It's really bad for the game, and you'll probably lose money and get banned. Let me know by leaving a like if you want to hear more stories like this. I got a tip off with kind of a crazy story. The email says this person's friend, who is a major participant in the item collection community, got false perm banned for real world trading and that the account has a ton of item collections on it. I reached out and got all the details. Here's a breakdown on the story. On October 25th, the third age felling axe was added to the game. It immediately was going for over max cash. So it was trading over max cash, but the GE value wasn't updated. So the GE value was 65K. This guy who got false banned decided to merch the ax the day of release. He bought one and then sold it for 3.6 billion GP and went to sleep. Since it was going for over max cash, none of this was on the GE. And so when he woke up, he had been permanently banned. The theory here is that the real world trade detection system thought the item was only worth 65k, but 3.6 billion GP was being traded over, hence real world trading. One thing to note is that the buyer of the axe was also banned. I don't know anything about that, but it's possible maybe they were real world trading, which triggered both of them to be banned. That's maybe the most logical sequence of events, but I really don't know. And the guy whose friend reached out who was banned had this insane bank. And what you're seeing on screen is only a small portion of their collection. And I just wanna say first off, I don't have any power at all in deciding who gets banned 
or not. But a few weeks after this happened, I was able to get in contact with a Jagex moderator and just forward the username of the account and the explanation of what probably happened. Thankfully, the JMod diligently looked into it and the player was unbanned 27 days after their permanent ban. And this is a very spooky story to me. I mean, any false bans are huge errors and really upsetting, especially unappealable false bans. Luckily, a little over two weeks after the release of the Axe, Jagex did update the GE value to max cash. And I just want to make sure we're also on the same page. It's ridiculous that players don't have better recourse than to message a content creator like me, and it's crazy that something like this happens at all. But the point of the story is we need to make sure this does not keep happening, because this is just one story I know of, and there are likely many, many more. I went to check and see if Lava Dragons are still active because I haven't checked in like six months. And I'm glad I did because I made a lot of GP over the next two hours. It only took a few worlds of hopping to find this account, nice sore 811 And at first I thought it was probably a real player because I've never seen a bot using a Cursed Scepter at Lava Dragons. When I used to check this spot at least, there were a lot of PKers active here and I'm guessing there still are, but the Cursed Scepter means these bots risk a lot of GP for a Lava Dragon bot. It also means they're probably getting significantly more Lava Dragon kills per trip, meaning more bot loot to be taken when you kill the bot. A Cursed Scepters are able to kill Lava dragons in like 15 to 20 seconds max versus your standard level 30 bot with fire strike killing lava dragons only gets like three or four kills per inventory and all of these bots are in the combat level 60s to 70s and have more stats leveled than any other lava dragon bots i've ever seen either they're repurposed bots or they have a more advanced anti-ban than other scripts i'm guessing the latter they log out in one tick if anyone who can attack them logs in so i scouted them out on a level three even so there were a few times when they were able to log out before I was able even to attack them even though I was spam clicking under them when I logged into the world. And once these bots are attacked, they try to run away and use overhead prayers pretty effectively, but I quickly found out that they don't bring prayer pots, so if you just smite them, they run out of prayer pretty quickly into the fight and it's an easy kill. And the loot is a minimum of around 300k, but averaged closer to 500k, which is absolutely unheard of for Lava Dragon bots that are this easy to kill. The one thing to keep in mind is they're spread all over the safe spots here, so you have to use a couple scouts position to see at least three potential safe spots. I was getting a kill here every three to five minutes or so for up to 10 mil GP per hour. I'd be super curious to know what the GP per hour trade-off is of an account that's using the Accursed Scepter to get crazy high kills, but it's also a lot more expensive because they're using up Ether versus an account using a more budget method to kill the Lava Dragons. Either way, these bots are definitely better loot and more fun to kill than the basic level 30 Lava Dragon bots using Fire Strike that we usually see. A huge wave of Slayer bots were reportedly spotted around the game in especially high concentrations within the Chasm of Fire on Zaya. I found them killing Greater Demons and Black Demons. It seems like they were being trained up for something other than just the Slayer skill, obviously. So I decided to jot down 10 names and track them on the high scores to see what they ended up being used for. Over a month later, 4 out of the 10 were banned, one hadn't changed stats at all, but the others all had 98 or 99 strength and 75 slayer. The logical guess here is gargoyle bots, which require exactly 75 slayer to farm. And these bots don't seem to train any other stat other than strength until they're 99, and then they switch to attack it looks like just based on the XP discrepancies. So now we know what they're for. 